fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Lone Ranger and Toto were in the saddle before dawn, riding through the broken hilly country in the vicinity of Spanish Springs. Their course led through a valley with hills towering on both sides. The hill on the right was famous for its many caves. In the light of a faint moon, it loomed as a black smudge against the sky. Suddenly, the Lone Ranger reined up. Oh, Silver, oh, Silver, oh, Silver. What matter? Look over there, Toto. You see that light? Ah. Maybe lantern. Wasn't there a moment ago? Someone must be in one of the caves. Plenty funny thing happened near here. There's nothing funny about two murdered men, Toto. Two men found dead near here. But no one know who killed them. Or why? Uh, you think we find answer in caves? I don't know, Toto. But I'm curious about that light. That gunshot. There's another. Can't tell which side they came from. The echo makes it all look. Light gone out. Come on, we're going up there. Come on, Silver, get him up. Come. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had covered about half the uphill distance to the cave when they saw the dim form of a horseman riding up the hill ahead of them. Him come from cave. Let him go. Follow his trail later. Uh-huh. Want to see what those shots meant. Come on, Silver. Get him The masked man led the way up the rocky side of a Spanish mountain with Tonto close behind. They reached the gaping opening of one of many caves and reined up. Oh, Silver, hold on. He's got no time to out. I'm sure this is the cave where we saw the light. Uh, we leave horses at ground here. Yes. Here's something. <laughs> a lantern right at the mouth of the cave. It warm? Yes. This is the light we saw. Wait, I'll light it again. Look like plenty big cave. We'll find out in just a minute. Come on. Hello. Look over there near that wall. Someone lying on the floor. Hold the lantern down close to him, Toto. You see how badly he's hurt? Ah, uh, plenty bad. Dead. In shot. Probably killed instantly. This makes three deaths. Ah. Uh. 
We follow trail of fellow who ride away? Just a minute, Toto. Bring the lantern up a little. Uh, uh, what matter? This wall near the dead men, Toto. Look at it. Uh, it's strange. If not natural wall. Made of big stones. Cut and fitted together. Maybe done a long time ago. Looks like the work of the ancient Spaniards. The Aztecs before them. Ah. Curious. Hmm. Look at the floor, Tonto. There's a well-worn path leading from the mouth of this cave directly to this wall. Look. Ah. I see it. Just a minute. I wonder. There might be a door here. The Spaniards used to build heavy stone doors. They had a knack of counterbalancing so they could be swung. Oh, this rock is solid, though. Here. Here, big square rock. I'll try pushing that one. It moves. Try again. Let me help. A little more. A little more. There. Oh, no. This opens into a tunnel. Yeah. We look it over now? We'll come back here, Tonto. After we've caught the man who fired those two shots. The Lone Ranger and Tonto left the lantern where they had found it, then took up the trail of the gunman. A few minutes later, two men entered the mysterious cavern and found the dead man on the ground. Hey, look, Red. This time it's Flint. Dead. Doggone it, Nick. The boss isn't going to like this. There's something else he's not going to like. Now, what's that, Nick? I got this wall. Huh? The door's been left open. Great day. Those two closed it, but they didn't close it all the way. The boss sure will be mad. You suppose those two found out things? Sure they did. How could they help it? They wouldn't have left without investigating the tunnel, would they? Not unless they had a mighty good reason for leaving. Maybe they heard us coming. Don't talk foolish, Red. They heard us coming, they'd have waited here and collared us. They left because they found what they was hunting for. Oh, God, it's probably my fault, too. Sure, it's your fault. You should have seen the signal light sooner. Nick, what are we going to do? There's only one thing to do, and that's to follow orders. You know what the boss told us to do if anybody found out about the tunnel? Well, I... I hate to blow it up. Let me figure something out. You said you dozed for a little while. Well, I was wore out, Nick. I swear I wasn't dozing for more than five minutes. I just nodded for a second. When I opened my eyes, I seen a light burning here. And I woke you right away. You sure that light wasn't lighted before you dozed? I swear it was. And it didn't take us long to get here. No. Now then, it stands to reason that those horsemen we saw didn't have time to investigate the tunnel. Hey, that's right. They may have found it. But they couldn't investigate it very far between the time Flint landed the lantern and the time they rode away. Well, then why did they ride away? I don't know that. But they must have had some reason for leaving before they could see much inside the tunnel. And that means they'll be back. Gosh, Nick, maybe you're right. I know I'm right. Well, will we wait here for them? We'll wait here for them. But we'll wait outside. And in the meantime, we'll get the blasting powder set in here. <laughs> you savvy? I reckon I do. When those two come back to look around, I better look fast. Because they won't do any looking after we fire the blast. After daylight, the Lone Ranger and Toto were able to make better time following the trail of the mysterious man who had ridden away from the cave soon after the two gunshots. The trail led along the side of the mountain for some distance then dipped into the valley to join a well-worn path. Easy, Sultana. Well, Tonto, it looks as if this is as far as we'll be able to trail the killer. Yeah, you wait. Um, he's got a path. He's a big fellow. See if you can find any hoof marks over there. Ah, uh, try. Well, I doubt if you will. That path's been packed down too hard. Ah. Uh, it's the regular trail into town. Ah, uh, town of Spanish Spring? Yes. That's where Sheriff Peters lives. That's right, Tonto. Uh, me not find hoof mark here. Oh, can't, uh. Now what we do? Go back to cave? See what's in tunnel? Not just yet. I want to find that killer first. I think he can tell us more than the tunnel. Oh, how we find him? Here, give me a hand, Toto. I'm going to take off the mask and put on a disguise. Get the other saddlebag open while I get a few things out of this one, will you? Uh, how you find killer by using disguise? Oh, the disguise is simply so I'll be able to move around town without raising a lot of questions about the mask. Oh. As for finding the killer, 
You remember where the tracks led through that mucky ground near the spring? Uh Uh-huh. The mud had a peculiar bluish color. Remember that? Uh Uh-huh. You remember. The horse went in deep, Tonto. So we'll go into town and look for a horse that has blue mud on the fetlocks. In the town of Spanish Springs, a heavily built rancher came into the cafe, paused at the door, and looked around. Hi, Benson. Looking for someone? Yeah, Joe, I am. I'm looking for a man. He's... Oh, a senor, huh? Well, he's right over there in the corner having his usual morning drink of wine. Sure enough. I see the skinny critter. I never could figure out why he comes here to sip his drink. Tell me he's got more wine stored up in that big house of his than this cafe will ever have. Yeah. Something I can get for you, Benson? No. You just go about your business. I'm going about mine. <laughs> Hernandez. Oh, Senor Benson. Yeah, it's me, all right. And I got a few things to say to you. Muy bien. You say them. Holy please, amigo. Control that temper of yours. You look ready to explode. And so I am. Now, now sit down and have a glass of wine. It's good to calm one. You've been talking to the sheriff about me, and I don't like it. So? You told Sheriff Peters it might be a good idea to question me about the murders over in the valley. <laughs> Is that why you are so angry? That's reason enough. No man could call me a murderer. But, Senor Benson, I do not call you a murderer. I simply tell the sheriff that it might be good to question you. That is all. And look, I show you why I say that. Put them playing cards away. I'm here. It was the cards, senor. I have come from a long line of Spanish gypsies. They are so skilled that the cards have messages for them. I shuffle the cards. So, I ask them, who is it who kills two men in the valley of the many caves? I then lay out the cards. So, they spread... I look for the ace of spades, senor, the death card. Ah, it's here. What's that got to do with murders? Here, it's the same again. Here is the king of hearts on one side of the ace. A good man, the king of hearts. Here, senor. Sacre, the evil one, the knave, the black knave. You see? The one with the very dark hair, the dark eyes. Like you. That's what I think of your card tricks. Now you're going to the sheriff with a story that you had nothing against me but the fact that a knave of spades came up next to the ace. And you're going to apologize to me. Senor Benson, a Hernandez never makes an apology. Then it's darn near time you begin. Never. Then by thunder, I'll ring it out of you. No, you, you fool, you. Let go of that man, Benson. Let him go, I tell you. I'll fix it, Peter. On you, will That ratty kid, why'd you have to mix in? I was just persuading this skinny varmint to tell you you had no reason to say I was the murderer of Hank. Save it, Benson. Look out! Look out for the knife! I'll fix you. What the... Boy, that skunk! Boy, he had a knife. One more knife, please. Benson, he was going for your back with the knife when this stranger come through the door and fired. Gosh, that's what I call shooting. Look at the knife over there. A clean hit. I... I don't like knives. Especially when they're aimed at someone's back. Hernandez, I should kill you for that. Hold in here, Benson. Or nowhere else. You better go for the sheriff. Someone will have to keep these two apart. Me? Go for the sheriff? With Mr. The sheriff is right here. And I'm her. You? But uh, where is Sheriff Peters? I'm Sheriff Peters. This is a morning for surprises. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. The Lone Ranger observed that it was a morning full of surprises. Beginning an hour before daybreak, when he and Tonto heard murder and two gunshots, then found a tunnel concealed by an ancient stone doorway. The final surprise came when the Lone Ranger, wearing a disguise but no mask, found that Sheriff Peters was a woman whose first name was Kate. But I thought Sheriff Peters was a man. He was, until he was murdered. Then I got appointed in his place. Oh, I see. I aim to get the honorary killer that got hanged. And when I do, I'll have the authority to back any play I make. Aren't you in a dangerous game? Maybe so, but I'll play it out. Do you suspect anyone? He suspects me, thanks to that sniveling weasel face. He told her to suspect me on account of the way his poker cards fell. Benson, you get out of here. Go on. Get along now. I'll run you in for disrupting the peace. Now, Kate. Get. All right. You, Hernandez, you stay here for a time. Sit down there and be quiet. See, si, senor. I will do as you say. Joe, you go on back to your work. The show's over. All right, Kate. Sure glad that stranger could shoot straight. Your husband had quite a bit of trouble around here, didn't he? Dad read it, mister. I don't know. He had something on his mind. For the past week or so, before he got killed, he was mighty worried. Did he tell you what worried him? No, he didn't. All he said was that he was on the track of the biggest, smartest gang of crooks that ever settled near the border. Oh? I figure he was close to getting them when the men he was after killed him. There were a couple of men killed over near the mountain of many caves. Yeah. Hank was one of them. Oh, I see. I wondered who the second man was. What's that? Well, uh, you see, Kate, I'd heard of one murder over there. On my way here, I heard that a second man had been killed. I didn't know who. Poor Hank. I, I wish he'd been able to get the help he wanted. If he only had. What help? Hank was in such a state that he wrote a letter to a padre that he knows. Yes? He'd heard that the padre was sometimes in touch with a masked hombre that's known as the Lone Ranger. If he knew the situation, don't you think he'd help me find Hank's killer? Yes, Kate. I think he would. When the Lone Ranger left the cafe, he saw no sign of Tonto or the Indian's paint horse scout. It took but a few moments to go both ways on the single street and confirm the fact that Tonto had left Spanish Springs. Hey, Silver, we'll look for him in camp. He's a big fella. On, Silver! A meeting place had been established near the edge of town. It was here that the Lone Ranger found Tonto. Oh, Silver, hold on. Oh, easy now. Come here, Kimasabi. Wait for you. Silly big fella. Where'd you go, Tonto? Uh, me pull a killer. You mean the man we trailed from the mountain? Ah. Me see horse at hit rail. Horse got blue mud on fetlock. Me wait. Paula fella who ride away on horse. Good. Did you find out where he lives? Ah. Him rancher. Live nearby. You see him in cafe. I did? Him fella with dark hair. Him own Benson Ranch. Benson? Ah. I, I wonder. We go see him? Yes, Toto. We'll go and see him. But first, I'll get rid of the disguise. Oh, you want mass? Right. Is it? Hello, Benson. Master. Uh, Jip and Jupiter. Take it Jip. easy. I want to talk to you. I didn't ask you in. I didn't wait for an invitation. If Fernandez sent a mask on, he did. didn't. What's that mask for? What do you want? Benson, you can't get away with murder. What's it? What's that you say? At least, not with this morning's murder. No, no. That can't be in the cards. It can't be, I tell you. Hernandez could have known about me. I... And the reason, what am I saying? The man was killed in one of the caves on the mountainside a little while before daybreak. You fired those shots. No, no, I... I mean, I... How did... I saw you. You saw me? We followed the tracks of your horse. The horse that's in the corral near the gate. He still has blue mud on the fetlocks. I see. Still denying it? Well, you know about it. What are you going to do? That depends on a number of things. I'd like to hear your story. See, there's something familiar about you. Is there? 
I wish I could see you behind that mask. You wouldn't recognize me? I know you from somewhere, hanged if I don't. I shot a knife out of Hernandez's hand a little while ago. That's it. By golly, it's your voice I recognized. You saved my life. That's what you done. You might have been sorry for that. Who are you? Why don't you answer a few questions? And perhaps I'll give you a chance to ask some. Why did you kill a man? Because the buzzard needed killing. Sheriff Kate wouldn't settle for that, would she? No, I, I reckon not. Let's sit down, Benson. You have a lot to tell me. Oh, hang it all. Listen. Suppose I told you that I was out to try and square things for my best friend. Uh, who is your best friend? Well, he's gone now. He was Hank Peters. The sheriff? Yep. He was out to smash a pack of crooks, but they got him instead. Well, I got one of them this morning. Did Hank Peters tell you about a letter he wrote to a certain padre? I suppose Kate told you about him. Yes. I suggested to Hank that he write that letter. I didn't expect it to do any good, but I figured there'd be no harm in... Hey, he wears a mask. He? The man I was thinking of when I asked Hank to write. Does he use bullets like this? Eh? Silver. <laughs> you. Oh, my sakes alive. Sit down, Benson. You, right here in my house. Benson, why did you shoot that man? Well, maybe I can't prove it, but he fired first. Listen, mister, there's something going on around here, and it's mighty big. Oh? Hank Peters got wind of it. He told me he was fixing to smash one of the biggest schemes he'd ever heard of. And Hank wasn't a man that talked to his hat. He meant what he said. And he said he was after some downright important crooks. Did he say what sort of crooks those were? Well, he didn't know who was involved and who wasn't, so he wasn't saying nothing to no one. But he did catch one of the critters over on the side of the mountain. They were shooting. Hank won. Then he come to me and said he needed help and lots of it. That was when I suggested he write the Padre about you. Then Hank got shot. Yep. And I set out to follow down a few leads that he left. I started poking into all the caves on the mountainside. Well, I didn't get nowhere at all. Then I had another idea. Oh, what was that? I remembered Hank said something about seeing the light on the mountain. I started waiting in the valley night after night. And this morning, a little before dawn, I saw a light and headed for it on the double. Yes, I saw that lantern. Well, I went to the cave, ran into a skunk who's been wanted by the law for some time. He saw I wasn't the man he was expecting, and he went for his gun fast. We both fired... And he missed. I didn't. Then you put out the lantern. I knew someone was expected, and I put out the light, hoping they'd lose time finding the place. Then I heard horses coming fast, so I hightailed. You didn't examine the cave? I didn't have time. There's an old stone door there. Must weigh tons, but it's counterbalanced, so one man can open it. What's beyond that door? A tunnel that seems to go straight into the mountain. That's it. That's what Hank found out. It must be. Tonto and I are going back there to investigate that tunnel, Benson. You want to go with us? Do I? Count me in. There's Flint, just as we left him. Where's that tunnel? That's what I want to see. Right over here. Oh, see these stones? Sure looks like a solid wall. Notice how carefully these are matched and fitted together. How do you open it? When we were here this morning, we opened it by pushing right here. Hey, let me see. You said one man could open it. You see, it's moving. I'll push again. It's gone. Otto, what's the matter with the horses? You may not know. Maybe a good idea may go see. Yes, I'll go with you. Otto, look. What are those men doing? No. Well, I do. Come on. I want you. Got him. At them, Toto. You missed. This my turn. Why, you? They get the gold. This one. One more for you. Oh. Now watch them, Toto. I'll take care of this. What's going on? What do you got there? There. Look at this, Benson. Wait, that's a fuse for blasting. It's lighted. I've cut it, Benson. It'll burn out harmlessly. But if Silver hadn't given the alarm, those two would have blown us all to kingdom come. Way the dirty... Let me at him. Hold it, Benson. Toto, get the canteens. We've got to bring these men, too. They're going through that tunnel with us. 
Hernandez sat alone in the luxurious library of a Spanish home that had stood for over a hundred years. When he heard a rap on the wall at his side, he placed his glass of wine on a nearby table. A cleverly contrived panel slid back easily in well-oiled grooves. It was but half open when Red Nick shot into the room, propelled by the Lone Ranger and Tonto. What is you? Ask. Take this, buzzard. I show you. You show me nothing. You two stay where you are. It's just a start. The law will carry on from where I left off. Red Nick, two double. They didn't bring us through the tunnel because they wanted to, Hernandez. No, they didn't squeal because they wanted to. But they squealed. They showed us all the army guns and ammunition you have stored in the tunnel. And they told us how they got to and from this house without being seen by anyone in town. You squealer. Yes, boss. We, we had to tell him. guessed at some of the things, but he was right. Hernandez, you came over the border and bought this old Spanish house when the law in Mexico got too hot. You tried several times to overthrow the government. Finally, you had to leave the country. When you found that old tunnel, you realized you had a fine hiding place. You began hoarding weapons, sending men out to steal from army supply trains. All right, so you know. Now listen, senor. I have money, lots of money. Let us talk. You can talk to the sheriff and the government officials. Yeah, that's it. You can talk to Sheriff Kate. She should be here, Benson. You want to be in at the end of the game her husband started. I'll go and get her. Be in tunnel and watch these trees to get back. Right. You ordinary weasel. Senor Benson, I, uh, I will pay you, I will... Your money's no good now, Hernandez. It won't bribe me, and it won't bribe Kate. And you can be doggone sure that it won't bribe the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.